He also creates a bigger Grand Canyon. Now, Hockney begins photographing the Grand Canyon in 1982, aiming to photograph the unphotographable, which is to say, space. Now, not many artists have attempted to paint the Grand Canyon. One reason is that it is so large, with no indicator of depth, or which no indicator of depth, distance, or scale can really convey. The other reason is that 19th century, the 19th century painter Thomas Moran produced what is considered by many the definitive version, a spectacular monumental series of canvases so detailed, so complete, and so naturalistic that it is set an unsurpassable standard. Unfazed by this precedent and directly inspired by Moran's 19th century view, Quote, intrigued to see how another artist grappled with representing the same vast heroic space, Hockney produced a bigger Grand Canyon, which is even larger than Moran's canvases. Here we have a series of 60 small canvases joined together to create one large view representing just a portion of the canyon. Hockney is gently poking fun at tourists with cameras, artists with easels, and the absurdity of attempting to map a three-dimensional experience onto a two-dimensional plane. So what he's doing here, and what will make this neo-expressionist, is he's kind of poking fun at art itself, at the art market, at the art world. This idea that we can capture anything as this illusion. Uh, so, of course, all painting is effectively, or most painting traditionally, is effectively an illusion. It is trying to create the idea of three-dimensional space on a two-dimensional picture plane. He's pointing this out, and when you look at it, you see those pictorial distortions, the flattening of form, for example, and he's doing that intentionally to kind of point out that that's what's going on. As we look into the background, you'll see there's no attempt at atmospheric perspective per se, we have the same amount of contrast here as we do, for example, here, even though this ridge is much closer than the rest of the background. So, he's pointing these ideas out. He's also kind of pointing out the absurdity of the art market. After all, when you create something this massive, it's going to be very difficult to sell because you can create art that is so big that there's almost no one who can actually display it maybe with the exception of a museum or something like that. So a lot of different ideas going into this. Now, this is not getting into the figure developments that we saw with Basquet, but what does make it neo-expressionist is a return to some of the traditional forms while flipping others on its head. So just like we saw the still life with Basquet's untitled 1982, here we're seeing something where he's taking a traditional form and presenting it in a new way, a very expressionist way. We get a sense of how he feels about the space from how he handles the paint, the brush, and the colors.